Welcome to the longest podcast ever. I'm your host, Dean DeMarzo, a.k.a. Longest Solo Ever. Join me and my co-host, Ro Panaganti, as we talk to some of the most incredible creators in nerdcore and video game music. We'll go behind the scenes of the creative process of some of your favorite artists as we talk about music, games, life, and everything in between. And now for today's guest, Oreo. Welcome to the longest podcast ever. I'm Dean DeMarzo, a.k.a. Longest Solo Ever, joined by my co-host, Ro Panaganti. And today, our guest is Oreo. Oreo is a singer, songwriter, YouTuber, and creator of the Electro Swing concept album, Clover. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> thank you for having me. Yeah, uh, thank you so much for being here. You and I just worked together on uh, a song I released, The Show That Never Ends, a digital circus song. I know you're coming out with your own digital circus song. I saw the trailer for it. That looks incredible. Yeah. You got the entire cast of the show on it. Yes. That's incredible. <laughs> so that is that is amazing. And and that just brings me to one of the two points I want to make. The, the two things that jumped out at me as I was going through your channel. I, I always do a deep dive on guests mm -hmm. before they come on. And the thing I noticed going through your channel from the very beginning, one was you are so aware of trends yeah in a way that i wish i was <laughs> is there is that something you consciously do i mean i was watching early on you were you were taking the most interesting approaches to like undertale content you wrote <laughs> lyrics to the entire pacifist run of the game yeah oh my goodness that's so old and cringe <laughs> i went i went back <laughs> i did this to row last week too it's great <laughs> oh yeah yeah it's so many things in such a unique approach and perspective is that something you've like sat down and consciously said this is what oreo is going to be no not at all <laughs> okay. i just kind of did it wow and when it comes to trends like i'm not actually like looking out for trends i just see something that i like and if i enjoy it then i make a song about it and hmm. Some of them happen to be trending. Maybe I just like trending things. <laughs> Actually, that's something I'm very curious about because, like, you cover such a wide range of, like, which, I mean, people enjoy so many different things. Obviously, like, in Nerdcore, you have anime fans, video game fans, just cartoon and animation fans. So do you ever have to, like, turn that off when you're, like, watching, like, an anime or playing a game and be like, Oh, my okay. goodness. Yeah. Like, I'm not going to monetize this. This is just <laughs> my thing. Because, like, you know, just looking down, I'm like, oh, my God, I love One Piece. Like, why mm -hmm. wouldn't you come up with that? And, like, so many people must find you through their favorite things. But can you separate that and, like, have some things that you don't get to make music out of? Yeah, um... I, I try my best to separate it, but sometimes, like, all the things I enjoy, I end up wanting to make a song about it. <laughs> there are times where I happen to get burnt out because, like, I feel like everything that I, everything that I do that's, like, as a hobby is kind of, like, related to my career. <laughs> so Of course. Yeah, that's why I try, like, to have some things that aren't, like, related to my content. There are, there are plenty of other hobbies I know besides music and games that you could do but that aren't related to my career. So I'm trying to do that, like baking, but I'm also trying to make a baking career now. I was going to say, you're not keeping that a hobby. You just opened a macaron <laughs> shop. Yeah, I love baking. So I always wanted That's to awesome. do like a macaron shop. So I'm... I'm just doing it. Those are hard yeah. to make. I have tried was, making yeah, them before. Yeah, they're so they're fun, impossible. though. That's why I like making mm. them, because they're hard. <laughs> What's your favorite macaroon flavor? Probably either fruity or floral. So, like, strawberry, raspberry, rose, like, those kinds of flavors. Ooh, that's awesome. I like a, like a coffee flavor. I'm a fruit person <laughs> for anything, <laughs> ice cream or otherwise. Yeah. But that's also, like, uh, I love to cook, and I post, like, Instagram stories is the farthest I've gone, but I've always wondered, like, if you separate that, will that make it more special, or, like, does it add stress when you take your hobby into, like, your career? But... It depends. Like, if you really enjoy what you do, I think, like, e actually, even if you really enjoy what you do, like, if it becomes work, it ends up becoming stressful mm. because it's work but if i don't know if you s make sure to have a good like separate separation between your personal life and your work life mm -hmm. then it it helps a lot yeah you mentioned you mentioned burnout being kind of the end result of not keeping an eye on that yeah is that something you feel like you've experienced often as a creative <laughs> yes <laughs> all the time yeah 
This year, I had a, like a big burnout thing where I didn't、mm. post for a really long time because I was just I didn't know what to do. There was nothing that I enjoyed at the time. But after taking a long break and doing other stuff and experimenting with other hobbies, like it really helped. So I don't think I'm in that anymore. <laughs> That's, That's good. really good. That's, That's good. really good. Yeah! Yay! And I think I think something you something you both said the burnout came because. There was nothing you were really int- into、yeah. and interested in and wanted to make. Yeah. And there was also like pressure to, like, wa- I feel like I have to make something.、Uh, yeah.、Yes. <laughs> But if you're not enjoying it, it goes back to your、right. answer to, like, do you follow trends? You just make the things you enjoy. And、yeah. that's when you can line those two things up, you are set, you know?、Uh. It's, it's the best feeling in the world. Is there ever pressure, though, when it lines up? Like, a lot of people. You know, capitalize on their, their favorite thing getting mainstream or blowing up.、Mm-hmm. And yet, it adds, I, I find that it adds a lot of stress. Like, you know, when Spider Man movies came out, I was going crazy,、yeah. but I was editing like five hours a day. And it was like, what is this for? And, Those were so good, though. Those videos were amazing. It, it was for <laughs> me. Like, sometimes I think, and this is a good、that's、question. It, to that's ask, it. You're like, right. Is there something you can make that's still for you?、Um, That you feel like isn't influenced by that pressure and that, like, you know, growing, you know, desire from your following to see you make stuff. Yeah.、Um, a good example of that for me is Clover. Like,、mm. it wasn't anything that was trending, it was something completely original. Like, that was like a pure passion project that I made. And, like, if you're really passionate about something and you work hard, like, it is bound to be successful, <laughs> pretty much. I mean, there's always like factors that go s into things too. And I tried to、uh-huh. match like the date, like 2020, as an influence of the 1920s, 100 years、oh, from、yeah. the、mm. 1920s. As like, so I had to make sure I finished everything by 2020, but it was a little bit late, but it was fine. But that was the whole, that was the only like trend ish part that I was trying to do. That is a great example of passion without any. Influence from trend whatsoever defining this whole new kind of thing. And I, I think you like brought a lot of electro swing awareness into the scene <laughs> of nerdcore, you know? Yeah. I mean, like Clover was really some of the first electro swing I heard. Oh, what? <laughs> yeah. One of my students,、uh, who, who I can really blame for getting me into nerdcore at all in the first place, because、uh, he brought me、uh, Build Our Machine by DA Games. And, mm, okay. um, yes, that's a classic. <laughs> and he really wanted to get into producing Electro Swing. And I was like, okay, cool, show me some examples.、Uh, and he pulled up, he pulled up、uh, the whole Clover album for me to listen to. So that was, like, that was、wow. my introduction to, to you and to Nerdcore in general. Sick. And yeah, it, I think since then, I hear a lot more Electro Swing influence in Nerdcore. And it's certainly, I mean, some of my last. Couple songs, no eggs, it was definitely in that kind of vibe.、Mm. And that's that came from listening to that. So that's an example of defining a trend rather than anything else. Yeah, being the trend. Yeah. One thing I'm curious about so I, I come from the video game world and I'm learning about nerdcore more and more thanks to Dean and thanks to you know, watching you all and you know, just talking more. But I, I don't always know like, about these really cool things. And one thing I'm curious about that I'm sure listeners are how would you define? Like electro swing, let alone you know, the kinds of styles that you like, especially for folks who are like pretty new to the subject. Yeah, electro swing is basically just a combination of swing music or jazzy kind of music with like electronic elements like EDM and、mm. like glitch hop, just like、yeah. a combination of that. It's like a modern twist to something that's older. Yeah. What would be like your essential listening? Like, if you had to like quickly pull up, hey, this is Electro Swing on your phone. Probably Caravan Palace、mm-hmm. is a good I example. Know <laughs> <laughs> I know it.、Mm. I think in 2012、yeah. in college, a friend of mine pulled up Caravan Palace and a bunch of like random nerdcore songs and like video game music songs and just showed me that. And I was like, this is such a bop. Like, it's electronic music, but also it has, You know, like you said, the swing elements, it's got some of them live instruments. It's really cool. My cat's going to join the podcast. A YouTuber that introduced me to Electro Swing was actually the Musical Ghost. I don't know if you've heard of、yes. the Musical Ghost, but. Who you've worked with on a, a lot of occasions. Yeah. 
they made a lot of remixes like of songs that aren't electro swing and made it into electro swing and that's what introduced me to the whole genre so i fell in love with it instantly i was like whoa this is so cool you can combine this with this and there's like endless possibilities yeah and and that's another example of what i think is so cool and interesting about this scene it does a great job of introducing new musical concepts just within itself. Like, I learned about Electro Swing from you, you learned from the musical Ghost, not necessarily pulling it from Caravan Palace or any anyone on a major label or anything, mm-hmm. you know? We're all, there are so many people who have heard of metal first from my stuff, which is crazy <laughs> because I don't, you know, yeah. they should go listen to Metallica, Avenged Sevenfold, any of that yeah. stuff. Not awesome. my, my nonsense. So <laughs> it, it's really interesting to me that we get to be these you know, these first listens for so many types of music for a lot of people. A lot of people have also brought up like, and to your point, Dee, like a lot of people are now being influenced and creating their own music and citing both of you I've seen actually as like influences to either start making video game covers or like nerdcore or uh, a lot of people have started like performing live and I remember like they'll always mention like oh yeah I, I started by watching like these channels and listening to this music and streaming this person and that's that's got to be such an incredible feeling I know I've gotten a few people to play guitar <laughs> on my own uh, yeah. on my own channel and journey and to see that is very unique I don't know if that's like an education kind of interesting where it's like okay wow people are listening to me and now I feel the urge to you know start telling advice and people but um have you had many people like share that (laughs) that you've been an influence or like seeking advice for singing especially or just in general oh yeah especially singing people are like how do you sing so good i'm just like it's practice like it takes a lot of like practice and like make sure you don't hurt your voice don't push too hard (laughs) don't do like things that will hurt your throat and oh yeah because that, that was a problem i had in the very beginning I, I i used to sing like rock and metal so i wanted to learn how to scream but i didn't know how to do a screamo that well so i just like force it so if you see my very first cover it's it's me I did. doing you a, had screamo. a killer scream at the beginning of that <laughs> it was literally just a vocal fry and it was like quiet and then i just like bumped up distortion Ah. I did that trick. I did that for so long. <laughs> I think it's it's also like the fear of waking up your like neighbors or parents or oh roommates. Oh my goodness. Like, oh, yeah. How do I do this? I've had neighbors complain once in my old house. <laughs> I have my wife text me every once in a while like, just making sure you're okay. okay. I know you're recording, but just like... <laughs> it's happened a few times now. <laughs> You know, just in general, like, maybe it's the space of nerdcore and, like, YouTube musicians, but sometimes people do box themselves into genres, and it's really cool to see that you've been so comfortable, like, joining or collaborating in multiple kinds of styles and spaces. Do you ever feel like you're kind of stuck to a genre, or, like, do you like being able to balance, or...? Um, I sometimes feel like people want electro swing from me constantly, but... I feel like it's not that bad because I do post like different genres too. So, and there are other songs of different genres that are also very popular. So, I don't think I'm really like forced into a genre. I don't think so. But there are times where I'm like, I want to get out of electro swing. I'm starting to run out of ideas. <laughs> I guess maybe if if anything that goes back to how you talked about like burnout and you know, getting to a different style of music or working with different people is a great way to like combat that. Yeah. Which brings me to the other, the other big thing I noticed, which is that you work with so many people. You do such an incredible job of like maintaining this network of singers and producers and performers and, and not the least of which is directing a massive project like Clover and um as well as the other project you've been directing which we'll we'll talk about in a minute if you want yeah but <laughs> i as someone who has by habit always done it all themselves and is <laughs> ends up very limited as a result um and very burnt out very often i i it amazes me that you can coordinate that many people mm-hmm. just just get contact with that many people to to have 
arranged in, in anything that results in anything functional. I'm, I'm blown away by that. Where does that come from? I don't know. Like it start, I, I started off working like all by myself. Uh, like All Eyes on Me was pretty much made all by me except for the mixing and mastering and some parts of the video. But I, I did the art myself. I did the video editing. I did the production Amazing. and the... And that was like my first original song. Like everything before All Eyes on Me and All Eyes on Me itself, I think I did all by myself. And then after that, I just slowly started like working with one person and then two people and then three people and then it just kept growing bigger and bigger. And Clover was actually really difficult to manage. I had a lot of problems when I was managing Clover and I learned a lot as a director. Um, I didn't, I when I what? first directed Clover, <laughs> yeah, I, you gotta know. yeah, when I first directed Clover, like I didn't even know you needed storyboards or mm. like an art director or like character sheets. I literally just had like a drawing of each of the characters, like just the front view. And then I just called it and I was like, I want the video to look like this. <laughs> and then mm, everyone sure. was like confused, like, like, where's the storyboard? And I'm like, what storyboard? <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Sure. Yeah, I learned a lot from Clover. So I, in the middle of Clover, I hired an art director to manage all the art and animation. Sugar Cub, she's awesome. She, I still work with her today. She's amazing. And it just, you just learn from, like, doing it. You just need to do it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you you make mistakes and you learn. Like you yeah. said, you didn't know you needed a storyboard artist, and you get a storyboard artist, and you and you go from there. And you had a, what I think is a very successful Kickstarter for that as well. It's such a huge undertaking. Was that your first time organizing something on that scale? Yeah, it was my first time. Wow. What kind of like guidance or resources were you able to pull? Because I don't know that many Kickstarters in that sort of, um, like with that kind of, you know, ambition and approach to make that compared to you know, products or just mm -hmm. a band releasing an album and the end. Yeah, I just looked at other Kickstarters and see what they did. And some Kickstarters that I looked at were like my favorite games, like Undertale mm. <laughs> and yeah. Amori. And um, another Kickstarter I looked was Interlunium. They're like an idol group. Mm. So I, I was really inspired by what they did. And because they also did like a single, like funding for their single. So I did something very similar to what they did. That's great. And I think I think it's really important to, it feels like maybe should go without saying, but we need to say it, that you need to look at what other people have done yeah. before. I see so many of my students in my music school and people in my Discord saying like, how do I do this? And, and it's something that like a million other people have, have tried mm -hmm. and figured out before. And I want to say like, just go Google it. First page of Google, <laughs> you will find 20 other people that have been mm -hmm. through this. And, uh, and I don't say that. That's me. But, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Just Google it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Everyone, no matter what you run into, someone has been through it before. And you can probably find them talking about it somewhere. And that's, mm -hmm. that's really important. Now, I think um, what's curious then is also, like, not only can you Google stuff, but you can, like, talk to people. And if if you, like, rewind when you were kind of getting started with YouTube and just, like, your career in general, were there... Any, like, particular, you know, folks that you were communicating with or, like, a community built to, like, you know, go to for advice or anything in particular? Um, um I guess... Or was it more of an island? <laughs> when I did All Eyes on Me and my first original song, I met a bunch of people through college. So I mm. asked a lot of help from, like, other music students and art students for advice and stuff. And... Yeah, and then I slowly, like, as I became bigger on YouTube, like, I met, like, other content creators that do similar things, and I would ask them for advice, and, yeah. Kind of build a network from there yeah. over time. Start yeah. small, and then it Start. gets bigger. <laughs> what would you say to people who want to start networking in their scene? How you've built relationships with... Um, I mean, I don't, I don't know how you got to know CG5, Living Tombstone, <laughs> any of these people, but... You know, you've clearly, you've worked with all of them. How do you, how do you get there? You start small. Like, you just network with people that are near you first. And then 
maybe online people who have similar subscri subscriber count as you and then as you grow and grow like you meet new people and they just come to you honestly <laughs> sometimes they'll come to you and ask to collab sometimes you go to them and you email them saying that you want to collab with them and yeah reaching out to collab with some, reaching out to ask someone else to collab with you that can be intimidating for yeah that's really people. intimidating it still is <laughs> yeah is there is there someone you reached out to who you got the collab with who you were like totally sweating about it with oh yeah <laughs> Yeah, for my Encanto original song, I uh, asked Adatsa to sing as Dolores for my Encanto mm. song, uh, Turn It Down. And I I honestly did not expect her to respond. I was just like emailing, I just e sent her an email and I was like, oh, well, let's, I just shot my shot, uh, shot and then she responded and she was like, oh my goodness, my kids are a huge fan of yours. And I was like, oh my God, that's so cool. What? What? <laughs> And then she was like, yeah, I would love to collaborate with you. And her and her husband, like, we set up a contract and we worked wow. together and it was amazing. She did the lyrics for some parts of the song, too. She did the rap and it was wow. amazing. It was, that was, like, the most craziest, like, person that I've gotten on board to work with me on something, in my opinion. <laughs> That is so cool. To where you feel like, like glad that you actually did reach out. And yeah. Yeah. It, it's things are so much more within reach than we think they are. It's something I have to remind myself of pretty often. Yeah. And and remind other people of as well. Just like yeah, go for you it, shoot your shot. You shouldn't be afraid to ask or send an email. Like, make sure you add links to your channel oh my and God. <laughs> links to your work. There's a topic right there. Yeah, because sometimes people send me, a, like, an email saying, hey, can I collaborate with you? And that's literally it. Right. Mm. And Who I'm are just you? like, who, who are you? Who is this? <laughs> what do you, you do? This? Are you a singer? Are you a producer? Are you an artist? Like, I don't know what you do. What's yes. the quality that will get you most excited to work with someone else, just on average? What makes you say yes to that email? Yeah. Any good art, good music, like anything that I can use to like make my content better or look better, I would definitely work with you. It doesn't matter the subscriber count to me or like the amount of followers you have. Like if you're if you have the skill set to do what you do like well, then I will definitely work with you. <laughs> Yeah, and if they're doing a good thing, they're going to end up with the subscriber count yeah. you know, in the end, you know? Yeah, which brings me to the time I shot my shot on a, a tweet you made a few months yeah. ago. Um, <laughs> you, posted, uh, you posted looking for a guitarist and singer for a new project. Ah, um, and I, see, I, see. I dropped a music video in there. And then like a month went by and I heard nothing. <laughs> Uh, and then as I was getting, I was getting on a train at the time back from New York City. Yeah, so I was going to have no that. reception for two hours. And I see your message come through and I'm like, oh my God. And oh, then the train no, left and I can't. lost all my bars. <laughs> um, uh, but this, this brings us to, and this is funny because this will air after the announcement comes out, mm -hmm. but it has not come out yet. So Ro, uh, you have no idea about this. I have no idea what you're talking about on this podcast <laughs> in general. All so, right, what's up? Do you, do you want to, do you want to? Describe it, Oreo. Sure. I am starting... Technically, I'm starting a VTuber band. Ah, uh, oh, oh. And that's we're going to have a concept album. Oh, that's awesome. Yes. And it's called Royale 5. Yes. All right. Is there, I is finally there said it! Ah! This, is, this, is the, this is the first time you've said it anywhere. Yeah. I think. Wow. That's cool. Right. Is, there, is there five members in the band? Yes. Or? Beautiful. That is really, really cool. It's so what, exciting. What, ins what inspired both the concept album side, of course, but also the VTuber kind of format or approach. Yeah, I was <laughs> talking to some friends on Discord, and they were showing me, like, VTubers. And at the same time, I was, like, trying to come up with concept album ideas because I wanted to do something after Clover, like another concept album, but I didn't know, mm. like, what kind of story or what kind of concept album I wanted to do. And they they were showing me VTubers, and I was like, this is so cool. Like, what if, like, I combined, like, my dream, my high school dream of being in a band with right. VTubing and a concept album? And then that idea sparked, and I immediately was like, wait, guys, I think I thought of an idea. 
<laughs> Finally, after I think back then it was like two years Burn since that. Clover. Now wow. it's like three years, three, three or four years since Clover, but. And then I was like, finally, after two years of like trying to think of what to do next, I, I have an idea. And I had multiple people come and go. <laughs> yeah. Because there were some people who were like not as committed or wasn't mm-hmm. like they wanted to do their own thing. They didn't like being like anonymous about it. Sure. Starting a new channel and stuff. So we went through a couple people, but now we have like. The perfect group, I think. And yeah, I'm it's super an amazing excited. Lineup. It's so yeah. Cool. It's very cool. And with it being VTuber, like, does that come with any sort of advantages or interesting kind of ways to, sh- you know, showcase the music compared to if it was just five well-known YouTubers? Um, I think it's interesting in the sense that we're we're probably one of the first VTubers that are a band. Mm. I don't know. I. Like, if there is one, someone tell me, but... Um, yeah, there's, like, I, singing groups, but nobody yeah, with, like, dr- yeah. you know, guitar, bass, drums, piano, singer. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There's, like, idol groups and stuff. A lot of them, actually. But I, I've always wanted to see a VTuber band, so I was like, I'm going to make my own. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah. So I think that being unique in itself is an advantage. But there's also, like, a lot of disadvantages. Like, we're starting anonymously as a new channel, and... That that's a risk in itself, and mm-hmm. we can't really stream with yet with instruments. <laughs> yeah, that <Sure>. is. <laughs> we've been trying to figure out the technical. The VTubing yeah. part is actually the hardest part. Yeah, so we we are also going to be streaming. We're not just doing music. Mm. So, yeah, I mean, the only instrument we could stream is probably singing. <laughs> right, singing yeah. over the instrumental. But I still hopefully... think I could build a piano rig. But. Yeah, hopefully we could get to that point where we could make a rig for like guitar, piano, and drums somehow. Right. Maybe three D models. Maybe Some steam trackers on my right. hands. Like, yeah, live MIDI or something. Yeah, that'd yes. be sick. So, how does this compare to the experience of putting together something like Clover? I know, you know, we're doing a Kickstarter for this one. You did a Kickstarter for Clover. You know, you're getting people involved, artists and musicians for both. Mm-hmm. It's. 10 times more difficult because I'm not working, like, it's not just me this time who's, Mm -hmm. like, leading. It's, like, there are other people involved in other people's, like, identities that are also going to be on screen and stuff. And, yeah, yeah, managing that at first was really stressful and difficult, but after finding the right members, I think everything just fell in place. (laughs) That is, that's, I'm glad to hear that. That's good. Yeah. It's so much easier now. It's actually like Clover was more difficult in the sense that it was my first time doing such a big project. But after experiencing Clover, I think it was a lot like the learning curve was a lot easier. And where did the Royale come from? Oh, each one of us are suits from a card. Oh, so, very cool. That's another I- new concept that I don't think any VTuber group has done. So yes. there's. I know there's four suits, but one of them is going to be Joker. I was going to say, and another one. (laughs) Yeah, there's Joker, so there's clubs, uh, spades, hearts, diamonds, and Joker. That's very cool. Yes. I like the concept. It'll also, it it probably makes it easier to design. Yeah. Yeah, you've got the color coding, you've got the the icon for each individual character. The character Mm. designs are incredible, and so, like unique among everyone and i was just saying today as i was mixing some of the stuff that i'm so thrilled with the vocal diversity i know me too i was so worried at first because like two of the members yeah two of the members Mm. like weren't aren't like singers like they don't usually sing but they could sing everyone sounds great and everyone sounds you can you can know who that is immediately i love Mm -hmm. that (laughs) like it's it's such a nice whether they're speaking or singing it's such a nice like identifiable yeah and we have like completely different personalities too like that are unique and i think it will be really fun when we're streaming and we have like a great group Mm. dynamic as well yes it's gonna be a blast this is the kind of thing that it's it sounds like it would also stay online like this isn't something you have to go to uh, cons or shows to to put on yeah i mean we've we've yeah. talked about what it would look like at 
uh, a con or something? Do we set right. up iPads in front of the, <laughs> the table on the panel or something, you know? Right. Like, I mean, Metalocalypse and the Gorillas. There's, there's a few animated uh, virtual figurative bands that exist, but... Or I'm sure, like, Bochi the Rock is so big. There's going to be a real Kiss Okaban playing, I'm sure. Yes. But, That's yeah, sick. It be, yeah, it'd be cool to draw from that one day if yeah. that was even applicable. I think in conventions, like, what VTubers do is they they have, like, a screen, just, mm. like, a TV screen or something, and then they're live, and people, like, talk to them. Mm. And then they talk back, and it's the VTuber models, obviously, but... Yeah, I I think that's really we could do that too, or cool. like an idea one of my friends had was we wear a mask, <laughs> <laughs> and just sleep token VTuber style. <laughs> it's just sleep token VTuber. <laughs> that Honestly, is the sentence I did not expect to hear tonight. That's really cool, and I think that is breaking new ground in a way that is very accessible. Again, VTubers are something everyone around the world can appreciate. You don't have to wait for them to come to your city. <laughs> yeah. I think it's it's funny you mentioned Sleep Token. I don't know if you're familiar with that band, Oreo. I I've heard of it. They're popular in like the prog metal world. Um, mm-hmm. It's like it's like if Hosier sang death metal songs. Whoa! <laughs> Very crossover and a hundred percent anonymous. As yes. Scenes by yeah, they all wear masks. Hundred oh. percent anonymous. And Ghost is another band that comes to mind. Boom. Oh yeah, I heard a Ghost. I'm a huge huge like nerd for Ghost music, and that. That's an interesting parallel I hadn't thought of with this kind of thing, where you have the anonymity, you have total control over the like characterization that you're presenting. Uh, like, I, longest solo ever, am always going to look like this, relatively speaking. But, you know, if you're front man a ghost, you're putting on whatever mask and makeup you're doing, same with Sleep Token, and same Good. with a VTuber, you are designing this avatar. Right. You don't carry with you, or your your fans will not carry with them as much like you know preconceived notions of like oh that's Dean is like I expect this, and then you won't have that pressure to do that. This can be something wholly new. Yeah, are you? Yeah. Do you have a a vision for how this is going to be different from Oreo as an artist? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. It, the genre itself will be different because we're going to be mostly like rock and metal focus, like J-Rock kind of style. Mm. And, I like it. Um, another thing that's different is I'll be streaming consistently. We'll be streaming consistently. And in my channel, I don't stream consistently. <laughs> 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 but yeah, and then there will be music and covers. That's the similar part. Cool. What would you say are, I mean, I know already, but what would you say mm. are the like main musical influences for this? Oh, definitely Hello Sleepwalkers. Yeah. The singer, I don't know how to pronounce the singer from uh, Ling. It was, it's the guy who sang Unravel. I like his stuff too. Mm, okay. Okay. I, know I forgot not. how to pronounce. <laughs> sure. I'm not sure how to pronounce his name. Aimer. I'm trying to think. My my brain is like not yeah, working Yeah, when you're right editing now. this, Dean, you're just going to have to put like the list up. So oh, yeah. Drunk. I mean, I, I can pull up like the, the references you gave mm. me. When yeah, we were there was, oh, Kagero Days, Kagero Project is also mm. Jin, Vocaloid producers too. Vocaloid mm. producers, anime themes. Yeah. Very cool. And I mean, I, I think a lot of people are already well, like aware with those influences to where, you know, this will be like a no brainer to check out. Yeah, it's, it's going to be yeah. a lot of fun. I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah. This is something I, like mm. I've said before, I don't tend to get in situations where I'm working with a lot of people. With other I'm, people, but yeah. yet. <laughs> and, and this is now like built in uh, collaboration nonstop, and I'm, I'm really excited about it. You know what's funny? Bye. When I first contacted you, I was actually scared to contact you. Oh my god, okay. I so was wait, intimidated. Talk about I'm curious. <laughs> <laughs> For some like reason, All right. okay, one of the reasons why was like, your your opinions about FL Studio like made it <laughs> made it look like it, it made it look like you were oh no. <laughs> no 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 I was still <laughs> no it just seemed like like I was worried like what if this guy's like really opinionated and then I use FL Studio and he's gonna be no, like you use FL Studio 
Grr. That is completely. I was talking to someone like backstage who was playing a band, and we were chatting. And I was like, obviously, like, yeah, I'd love to work together and stuff. And then I casually mentioned my own distaste for FL, which again, <laughs> I have no. There's nothing wrong. I use Adobe, and tons of people hate on Adobe because yeah, they don't so. know how to use it. And but no, <laughs> it's not about. <laughs> But, yeah. like, you have to be, you walk that line, because, you know, if you want to collaborate with people. <laughs> yes, you got it. And it's it's mostly in jest. I guess I haven't been making it as clear as, as I should have. You gotta I know get, it's a like, joke now. Twist. That's so funny, though. That's no, great. but um, that wasn't the only reason. I just, I don't know, you just seemed so intimidating i don't know i don't know why everybody's intimidating until you start talking i think maybe maybe that's yeah. why too because i didn't know you and i i remember talking to our mutual plexi and i was like dude like what if he what says dude? no and he thinks it's a stupid idea and he th oh, he's no. like why are you using fl studio <laughs> oh my god <laughs> oh no yeah. To be fair, I've heard as much. I've heard plenty slung at Pro Tools. Oh yeah, almost more than FL. I hate <laughs> Pro Tools even more than I hate FL yeah. Studio. Yeah. But I've used, used it. The only difference is I've used FL because one of my close friends has used FL for ten years, and we've collaborated for ten years, so <laughs> I know it enough to where. Yes. Yeah, nothing should ever stop a great collab from happening. Yeah, so. no, it no, nothing was gonna stop me. It was just I was just a little like nervous. Mm -hmm. Oh well, I'm I'm so glad. But I think it was also because um, when I reached out to other people and they they rejected, I was like, what if this guy rejects and I have to find someone mm. else? Oh, no. I can't imagine turning down that. <laughs> but it was it, yeah. I mean, it, it was it's such a lot a, of commitment. So mm -hmm. it is. You're right. But uh, it, it just seemed like such a no-brainer for me. It was such a completely formed concept, for one thing. You, mm -hmm. you, told, you told me exactly what it was going to be, and I could tell you were so excited about what that thing was that I got excited about it. And obviously, everyone involved is incredible. So it was, yeah, it was a no-brainer for me. I'm, I'm very happy. If I can, if I can predict you know, the, the listeners of Longest Podcast Ever to be like, eager budding like excited musicians maybe a bit younger or like new to their career and want to collaborate because obviously both of you and myself included like you know doing so many collaborations as like almost a necessity what what are some of the like best ways to make a collab go smoothly like once you're in it <laughs> you know mm -hmm. after they said yes and you're <laughs> you know you're committed what do you like to have um, you know, conversations or uh, what should, you know. That's a hard question. I, I never thought about it. Just That's what podcasts are for. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I guess, I'm sorry. I know for me, I need clarity. I need mm, guidelines uh, and like, I need the walls yeah. of the fence lined up so I know where I'm working. And if you don't know, like have any questions about something, just ask. Like questions are much appreciated. Communication is really important. Like It's everything, yeah. Yeah. That's the big one I was thinking. Um, every collaboration besides like, hey, could you, you know, do this real quick for me? And it's, you know, your oldest friend ever. And you're like, oh, yeah, that'll take two seconds. I like calling or like having like an open chat to figure out what they want before saying yes or no. or And also a deadline. Cause yeah, the deadlines are important. <laughs> Both of you sparked up immediately. It's like, if there's no deadline, I can't say it's happening. It's not happening, no. Something else of is coming not. in front of it. Something else yeah. has a deadline, and that needs to happen. Yeah. I can say, yeah, Oreo has been fantastic about both of those. Um, I, could say <laughs> I don't made. know about that. <laughs> you have, I have to you delay. Have. Yeah, but like that's, that's a, a reasonable business decision, and you okay. still gave us a deadline to start with. Right up, right up front, we had a clear idea of the requirements, the timeline of what we were looking at, when we were going to launch, and then also just like such clear guidelines for what you wanted for the song I'm writing for the band. You gave me a playlist of 11 songs of like, here is exactly the target I want you to hit for this. And I'm like, perfect. That is exactly what I want. I want to be told how to, how to make this what you wanted. And, and that's it. It's great. I love that. Um, and you've worked with art directors. Of course, all of us have worked with album artists or like single art. Mm -hmm. uh, so likewise, would you also provide kind of like a, an idea board or like 
Just like a Google Doc with a bunch of your favorite things? Or... Yeah, that always helps. Like a Pinterest board or like just a bunch of images of like references. References are very important. Um, or they mm. don't know what to do. <laughs> right, right. Do you have right. any like go-tos or like favorite kind of images that help when it comes to visual things? Honestly, I make a Pinterest board. I just mm. look up like certain things like... I have artists that I really like, but I haven't been using them as reference because they don't fit the style that I've been going for. But an artist that I really like is um, Nemupan. She, okay, um, Nemupan. She's an artist from Chile, and wow, I love her art style. Like I just want to like <laughs> eat her art. It's so pretty. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> and and I think you're right. References are everything because, like even in music, when I say hey you know, write a heavy guitar riff. That could mean 10 so different many, things. Yeah. Like 50 anyway. years of different things yeah. <laughs> come to heavy mind. Heavy in, you know, thrash metal is completely different from heavy in electro swing. Like, could mean anything. So references help you speak in yeah. really concrete language. Oh, I'm working on another concept album. <laughs> okay, yeah. Very you mentioned cool. this to me in passing. I yes. wasn't sure if you wanted mm. to bring it up. And I was yeah. like... Are already you what? <laughs> I just thought of it. I, we didn't I finish thought of it this one yet. Yeah, I thought of an idea a long time ago, but I never flushed it out. And I was like, it, I had a lot of free time this one time, and I was like, what if I just flush this out? And then I just thought of like seven songs, and they're already composed. And That's amazing. <laughs> that so it just all came incredible. to me. It's kind of like Clover. Like it just all came to me at once. Yeah. What is that? What does that feel like? What are the circumstances under which that happens? Um, usually it's an idea that's been sitting in my head for a while, but it's not, like, fleshed out, and mm. after, like, either, like, a few months to a year, like, a couple of years pass by, I go back to it, and I see if I could, like, make, add more details to it, and I have a list of, like, concepts on Google Doc, whenever I wow. come up with an uh. idea or have an inspiration, I write down, like, a summary or, like, a concept thing, and then... I have friends that I go to to help me like flesh out the ideas more, and mm. like some of, to name some of those friends: Chi Chi, Kami Cat, Nenorama. They they're great. They <laughs> sometimes we just get into call, and I'm like, "Can you help me like develop this character?" They helped with Royal Five too. Oh, nice! And, Very cool. Yeah, with like the ideas of the Dream Factory thing, and yeah, actually, the original idea was from Rinny. Oh, wow. The Dream Factory idea. Our bass player. She told her um, friend that idea, and her friend was like, I don't get it. But then she told me, and I was like, I get it. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> so she thought it wasn't a good idea, but I loved it. She she is hilarious. She's an absolute yeah. riot. So how long was Royale 5 like cooking in the back of your head? Because yeah. you said you've been working on this for two years at, the, yeah. at this point. Was it it's longer before years. that? No. Okay. The idea came to mind in a voice call to around two years ago boom wow yeah. that's amazing yeah it takes it takes so long for these ideas to cook yeah yeah it's cool. clover also took a while i think clover also took around two one to two years to from the time prep. you like yeah. conceptualized it to when it released or yeah i think that's nice like we talk so much about short form content and like people get into like weekly schedules and like expectations even streaming but to have like one thing that you know cooks like and takes its sweet time yeah is, it's honestly super inspiring to me um as someone who's not full-time making music as their job semi-intentionally i guess um it's it's really cool because you know you mentioned google docs i i have like a little google keep on my phone so you get the idea and you're like oh, you're walking somewhere you're outside checking mail and you're like i am not forgetting these words they sound yes. so good together voice memos are important too uh, like just humming a melody that's in your stuck in your head i have ever, so many voice memos. <laughs> i was gonna say do you ever keep any that you could like show to you know for kickstarter just like to kind of show people like this is what started as yeah do you have idea. like all eyes I on probably me <laughs> <Somewhere>. I, <laughs> I think i might have like clover stuff on there mm. i don't know about all eyes on me because that yeah. was kind of made on spot but ideas from for clover are definitely on my phone just I love like that. <laughs> the it's, it's melody or something 
like people yeah. used to have tape recorders, yeah. like musicians, and you'd hear Michael Jackson or um, like Eddie Van Halen. He went into the closet once and sang out like one of their biggest hits. Um, and just, you know, you have a tape recorder, so you have to go back, you have to play it and record it. For us, you can voice memo it, and that becomes, you know, a song idea. Or Maybe I should release that as, like, the first yeah. version of Do this it. song. <laughs> that would be so <laughs> funny. Uh, I think it's beautiful just to, like, kind of see the growth of the idea and the art in a way that, you know, not many people always share. We always see, like, the pretty, final, produced, mastered thing. Right. No um, one realizes how rough these things start. Yeah, or even seeking like the storyboards as yeah. you mentioned for like these things behind the scenes is luckily like such a a popular thing now i mean yeah. reaction videos and people going deep dives so um i was thinking of also making like for the anniversary of clover i want to make a clover game Ooh. and or i already made it game it's just gonna be out <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be out in like February, but yes. I also want to. I, I want to try making an art book out of all the old art oh, that's pieces wow. that we have. I think that'll be yeah. really cool and neat. Yeah, that'd be amazing. Cool. Yeah, yeah. it's very in the same spirit. And Ro, you said you know, as someone who doesn't like, you've released way more albums than I have. <laughs> I, yeah, I just do little <laughs> singles sprinkled out into the... Yeah, there's like 16 albums that are somewhere in the last 12 years. But wow. video game music, just it became like an addiction. So I, I have like one original album and then a bunch of covers, which is, you know, as I'm getting more interested in nerdcore and like how much y'all get to like write and you know come up with these original concepts that tribute your favorite things it's really inviting but also it seems like stuff that you get to cook and like you know let sit for a few years so you know in 2027 maybe i'll <laughs> i'll start learning from everything like we've talked about today and you know just how the scene is but yes. i want to see some rope on the nerdcore <laughs> <laughs> but yeah i'm both of you i'm i'm so like inspired to do more long uh you know long-term planning of content <laughs> in a way that i don't feel like mm -hmm. i have been so yeah that's that'll be an exciting thing to try thank yeah. you so much oreo for joining us thank you for having me and thank you to ro panaganti my co-host yeah absolutely super great conversations We're talking about how to collab even if you're scared and <laughs> You know, taking initiatives with crazy big ideas. Yes. Yeah, you know, this is a really wholesome chat with you, for sure. Thank you so much for watching. Bye! Bye!